do most of the podcast mixing for the NoCellacast and for Chit Chat Across the Pond using a tool called Hindenburg. And I have tracked down uh, Matt, uh, sorry, Chuck Wang at uh, the podcast movement in order to talk to him about Hindenburg. And the main reason I wanted to talk to you guys is so that other people that listen to the show could learn how the tool I love so much works for me. So uh, welcome to the show here. Thank you. Thanks for having me. All right, so describe to people what is a digital audio workstation. That's probably the best place to start. Sure, it's everything that you need to create an audio story. It's just all the effects, recording, being able to edit, and being able to publish. And multi-track. And multi-track. Because there are editors that I really like, like Fission, but it's not multi-track, so I can't use that. So I need something that has multiple tracks. Sure, and then that's what Hindenburg provides, Journalist Pro. All right. So, uh, yeah, describe what are the what is the difference? You've got a couple of different products there. We have Journalist and Journalist Pro, and what the big features are are noise reduction in Journalist Pro, and we've got voice profiler and being able to publish to multiple destinations quickly and easily. Oh, okay. So I think I have the junior version. I have just a Journalist, and it's been working great for me. So uh, describe to people how the software works. Honestly, it's the simplest. If this is the simplest way to, to record, edit, and publish podcast. And all you really need to do is plug in a microphone, hit record button, and start playing around with it. You can actually Hang get on. something going. Nope, nope. You got to arm the track first. Right, you do have to arm the track, but it's as simple as hitting record after you arm it, and then just going to town. I'm just saying that because 100% of the time I start recording, I press that record button, and it goes, "No, you forgot to arm a track first. That's what funny. does arm a track even mean? Arming a track is it means. For example, you would just hit what? record to arm the track so it's ready. You select your track, you arm it so it's ready. And so you're then pressing a little bu red button on the track. Red button, and then you hit the red button below. But why do I have to arm a track first? Is that so it knows on which track I want to record? You're just, 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 you're just prepping the, the this workspace to get ready to record. Okay, yeah. so one of the things that is was invisible to me when I first started using uh, Hindenburg was uh, I would just drag my audio in from outside of, of Hindenburg and drag it in and then I would start working with it. Sure. And it wasn't until I saw one of your, um, had a, you guys had a, a web um, webinar thing, uh -huh. and I found out that I could actually save my jingles in the sidebar. Right. I didn't even know the sidebar was there until I watched that. Right. And that's like hugely powerful. It, it, is, it is powerful if you want a storyboard, because you can organize all your clips in, the, in our clipboard. And it's a matter of literally dragging and dropping things that you find important to you to create that narrative on the right pane. Oh yeah, it, I mean it was magical once I knew about it, but it, the right pane is full is uh, is not displayed by default, so I didn't know it existed. And and once you know that that's there, that's really really powerful. I notice you have other things in there. You have a uh, you have a clipboard showing. So I've been talking about the favorites, which is where I keep my jingles. But what is the clipboard for? It, actually, the clipboard is the storyboarding por portion of it. So if you find a nice segment within a, a conversation that you've recorded that you want to uh, save as far as your narrative goes, you can actually script in that clipboard area. So for example, if I'm talking to Allison, Allison, you've got a great segment that I want to put to the side for later. And then I have Steve, Steve has another conversation and we put his, uh, his tracks in there as well. And we kind of create a story because sometimes the interview isn't necessarily what is what unfolds. So oh, oh, like interesting. through and edit that narrative. Ah, that's not what podcasters do. Podcasters just record a bunch of stuff and just shove it on out there. Right. <laughs> right. And you can do that too. And that's also really powerful because, like you know, with the favorites, you create your intros, your outros, you save what you need, and you drag it over to the workspace. And when you're ready to use it, it's, it's there. Okay. I can see how that could work. Now, here's another question I've always had. When, I, when we look at the Hindenburg uh, interface by default, it says voice track, interview, music, track five. You can name those. You can name those. Why does that matter? It's it, visual organization. So it doesn't actually change anything to have a name. No. Because I notice all. every time I open it up, it has in there the names that I did the last time. And I sit there worrying about going, okay, well, is this an interview or, you know, because it's something that I did before. Right. It's, it's all about your preferences, honestly. It's, you can have this be Allison, it could be Steve, it could be Chuck down below, and your music. Okay, it, and it doesn't matter. It, it, doesn't it, matter. It, it's just to give yourself a cue so you remember that's Allison's track. Exactly. Okay, that makes, that makes sense. One of the things I do like about Hindenburg, too, is that when I bring an audio track in, it sort of levels it, right? Right. It, again, like Hindenburg, what's really powerful about Hindenburg is we take a lot of the steps out of the process, so you don't have to think about it. You don't have to worry about industry standard levels. Like you said, you just drag a trap, 
drag a, a clip over, and it will automatically set the levels to uh, industry standard for you. It actually, uh, well, Hindenburg Pro does the industry standard thing, I think, right? Uh, we do actually minus 16 if you bring it in for, on the on journalist as well. Oh, okay, okay, I didn't know that because I actually run through a whole leveling process afterwards, so I level it twice apparently. You don't need to. That's interesting. Yeah. I did not know that. I should take a look at the waveform before and after. So as far as uh, publishing, what happens in that step there? Publishing is really easy. It's here. So if you have multiple hosts, like you have Libsyn, Spreaker, or whatnot, all you have to do is create a profile for each, and afterwards you can do one-click publishing. It's easier to see all online. Uh, it's a three-minute tutorial. Sure, sure. Okay, that's pretty cool. Um, one of the things that I didn't kind of catch on at first is this is a cross-platform app, correct? Right. You can Windows, Mac, yeah. I hear people still use Windows. I don't know any of them, but uh, <laughs> the uh, but just to be fair, one of the things that is an interesting thing about this is because it is cross-platform. There's some things that don't work exactly like a traditional Mac app, and we can you and I can get into that afterwards. Sure. But there's a few things that are just like oh, that's because this is a cross-platform app. I noticed some differences in the interface. Uh, I you have to point out specific ones, yeah, but there, I'm sure there's going to be some differences in terms of, especially like shortcuts on oh, the keyboard. Yeah, yeah, sure, right. sure. Okay, well, this is very cool. If people wanted to look into Hindenburg, well, we should talk about the pricing. I happen to have gotten on a very weird sale, but uh, a, a one time only in the history of time sale. But right. in general, how much is uh, Hindenburg? In general, it's $95 for Journalist and then $375 for Journalist Pro. Okay, so that's, that's not a, a cheap app. But for the capabilities that you're getting here, I think it's a really powerful app. Honestly, it's the time savings, it's the, the lack of frustration, and it's having really something that's intuitive for you to work with that you can use day in, day out, and not have to go anywhere else. It's everything that you need and nothing that you don't. Okay. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much for taking the time you're with welcome. us, Chuck. You're very welcome. All right, wait. you got to say hi to... to, hi, to uh, uh, hi, Martin. <laughs> Martin is at home in Copenhagen, <laughs> didn't get to come, and he's really mad, so I had to go talk to Chuck. Right. Martin, the whole ball is well. Chris, Nick, everyone else.